Uh, I wanted to dive into your time uh, in the NFL a little bit, in Tampa Bay as the head coach. And how did you decide that the NFL was something you wanted to pursue? I didn't, yeah, quite honestly. It came to you. <laughs> well, yeah, it did come to me. But quite honestly, I wanted to be here yeah. the rest of my career. I built a house. You know, Most coaches don't move in the middle of their tenure. We built a house literally a half mile from here, mm -hmm. from the stadium. Um, I was going to stay here the rest of my career. I had a great role model to look at in Coach Paterno. He's at, mm -hmm. at uh, Penn State his whole career. Yeah. Uh, I said, I'm a, he lived a mile from the office. I said, I'm going to try to create a similar situation here. Mm -hmm. And that was my plan. I had turned down a lot of really historically great jobs to mm -hmm. stay here. But then our league fell apart. Yeah. And the Big East fell apart. We were going to be, in no disrespect to the American Conference, because I think they play great football, but... After 11 years, that's not the level that I wanted to be in. I, mm -hmm. I wanted to be in the Power Five level. And I had promised all the great players, like you said, at the end there, we were going to have the fifth or fourth rated recruiting class in the country before yeah. I left. Yeah, you were rolling. Yeah, it yeah. was really uh, a great class. But I wasn't sure. I didn't know where we were going to end up. You know, and you look at programs that, you know, kind of when the music stopped, didn't have a chair, mm -hmm. it's really hard to compete consistently you can have a one-off but it's hard to compete consistently if you're not a member of an established league and we weren't going to be and I had promised these players that we were recruiting that I was not leaving you know the word you're going back to Penn State no I'm not yeah. I'm not going to anywhere I am here for the rest of my career mm -hmm. I couldn't go to another college and as this thing fell apart I got quite honestly I got concerned mm -hmm. and I couldn't look the kids in the eye and go to another school. The only choice I had was the NFL, and they came calling, yeah. which fortunately or unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. um, so I learned a valuable lesson. I share it with the players every year. I ran from something. I didn't run to something. Mm -hmm. The National Football League was the only thing I was not prepared for. I never prepared to be a head coach in the NFL. Yeah. It just came to me, and I took it because I, I was afraid to be here. So I ran from this. I'll never forget the day I got the call. I was sitting in my office in Tampa, palm trees blowing outside the window. <laughs> you know, people would say, does it get better than that, right? Yeah. And they called me from Rutgers and said, yeah, guess what? We just got invited to the Big Ten. Wow. I did my best to be excited for them, mm -hmm. but I hung up the phone. I literally started crying because that's what I had dreamt of. I had dreamt of Rutgers being in the Big Ten, but the only part of the dream that was missing is was you. I wasn't the head coach yeah. there. Yeah. And for things to work out the way they did and for God to create a plan to have me back here, you know, I believe it's it's divine because the things that happen for me to end up back here are almost, you know, very unlikely. Let's yeah. call it that. Yeah. So uh, I'm thrilled. I get a second chance at a place that I consider home, my dream job. Mm -hmm. Now we got to get it done. And uh, but yeah, it was uh, quite an experience to yeah. tell you. Uh, I liked it. I don't. I don't. I don't want to make it sound like I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. I just hadn't prepared for it. It wasn't never part of my plan. Yeah. So. One thing I know, I'm not good when I don't plan for stuff. It's <laughs> I got to execute a plan, yeah. and the NFL is not a place to learn on the job. <laughs> I, I, I can tell you that from experience. What, what, what's the part that that you feel like you weren't prepared for in the NFL? I'm curious. Well, I didn't understand the business aspect of the league. Yeah. That's number one, right? I mean, everything is dollars. Like, just this. In the National Football League, the number one respect comes to the contract size. Mm -hmm. In college football, the number one respect comes to what you did out there on the field last week. Yeah. Right? But if you sign a monster contract, everyone in that locker room looks up to you. Mm -hmm. Regardless if you're playing like dog do out there yeah. right now. He's rich. You're <laughs> still the guy who's making the, got the yeah. biggest contract. Now, that wears after a while, right? Yeah. That was one. Um, two, I can remember talking to the players early in my tenure about, as I used to talk here all the time to them, about being a great husband and a great father. These experiences are going to prepare you for that. And I made a comment like that. And I remember one of my established players who I respected a great deal. He said, Coach, you do things the way you want. He said, but if I could give you a little advice, these are grown men. Mm -hmm. right? Some of them have been husbands and fathers for 10 years. They don't need you. Yeah. What they need you to do is make sure they're in good position to make plays. Yeah. Get them coached. Get them aligned. Get them ready to go play and let their skills. You know, these are the elite of the elite. They really don't need your life advice. They need, yeah. they need you to help them make plays. And that really struck me. I said, like, I got, you know, we break it down here all the time, family on three. Mm -hmm. I used to, I started there at, at, at Tampa doing that, and then I stopped. I said, that's hypocritical. Yeah. This isn't, this isn't, this is a business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every Tuesday we bring in 10 to 12 guys to work out during the season <laughs> for your job. 
right? <laughs> if, you're, if you're player 53 to 40, mm -hmm. your job is on the line every week, and we're going to have guys trying to take it on Tuesday. I remember <laughs> I'd, I'd, have, I'd grab something to eat, and I'd always go out to the field on yeah. Tuesdays at lunch and watch the workouts. And that struck me, too, like, wow, this yeah. is truly – a business business. It's hard to tell them it's a family when that's going on, right? Well, that's, that's exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I think yeah. the strength of what we build here is that family, is mm -hmm. that sacrifice. You know, we believe family, forget about me, I love you. We don't think love's a feeling. We think love's an action, and that yeah. action is sacrifice. Well, no, -uh, that, yeah. <laughs> that, that isn't happening yeah. there. You know, and don't yeah. try to, my whole thing is don't try to be what you're not. Mm -hmm. You know, we are who we are at Rutgers. Some like it, some don't. I'm good with both, yeah. right? I'm not trying to win the popularity contest, but what I am trying to do is get people that want to be part of this and build them up to be the best, you know, the, the saying that's out there now that's overused, the best version of yourself. Yeah. But it's true. You can't, be be you, know, you can't be the best version of him. <laughs> you got to be the best version of you, and that, to me, is our job collectively. Uh, that's why I love college football. I still think college football is the best growth opportunity for young people. Mm -hmm. The mental and physical toughness that our guys learn being a part of this program, they're gonna, that gets them ready for life. Yeah. Yes, football, but life.